Where do you leave? Where does your departure be? Oh, all right. Beyond? Okay. My dear friends, we are about to begin this Mass. And we pray that you join us in celebrating God's love. Our opening hymn for today will be Table of Plenty. Table of Plenty. <coughs> come to the feast of heaven on earth. Come to the table of plenty. God will provide for all the babies. Here are the table of plenty. Oh, come and sit at my table, where sins and sinners are friends. I wait to welcome the most and lonely to share the cup of my love. Come to the feast of heaven on earth, come to the table of plenty. God will provide for all that we need. Here at the table of plenty. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God our Father, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. My dear friends, we are gathered here to celebrate God's love, and in this Mass, We'll be praying for all of you, wherever you're joining us from. This Mass is going to be offered for you and for your families. Today, I also would like to pray for Michael and Indira Donaldson, who have asked our prayers. Also pray for their family, that God may watch over, bless, and protect them. I'd also like to offer this Mass for a soldier in my former unit who was killed two days ago. Pray and ask that God may grant specialist Erika Salapu eternal rest. That God may be with her family to bring them comfort at this time of great pain. Also pray for members of my former unit that God may help them to deal with this loss. I pray for our sick here at Walt Reed. Pray for our doctors and our nurses that God may help us together work for the healing of all those we care for. And to prepare ourselves for this Mass, let us call to mind our sins and ask God's mercy and forgiveness. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart, Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. You came to call sinners to repentance, Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. You plead for us at the right hand of the Father, Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. O God, from whom all good things come, grant that we who call on you in our need may at your prompting discern what is right, and by your guidance do it. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the first book of Kings. The brook near where Elijah was hiding ran dry, because no rain had fallen in the land. So the Lord said to Elijah, Move on to Zarephath of Sidon and stay there. I have designated a widow there to provide for you. He went and he left and went to Zarephath. As he arrived at the entrance of the city, a widow was gathering sticks there. She called, he called out to her, please bring me a small cupful of water to drink. She left to get it, and he called out after her, please bring me a, a bit of bread. She answered, as the Lord your God lives, I have nothing baked. There's only a handful of flour in my jar and a little oil in my jug. 
just now I was collecting a couple of sticks to go in and prepare something for myself and my son. When we have eaten it, we shall die. Elijah said to her, Do not be afraid. Go and do as you propose. First make me a little cake and bring it to me. Then you can prepare something for yourself and your son. For the Lord, the God of Israel, says, The flour of the jar of flour shall not go empty, and nor the jug of oil run dry, until the day when the Lord sends rain upon the earth. She left and did as Elijah had said. She was able to eat for a year, and Elijah and her son as well. The jar of flour did not go empty, nor the jug of oil run dry, as the Lord had foretold through Elijah. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The responsorial psalm. Lord, let your face shine on us. Lord, let your face shine on us. When I call, answer me, O my just God. You who will lead me when I am in distress, have pity on me and hear my prayer. Men of rank, how long will you be dull of heart? Why do you love what is vain and seek after falsehood? Lord, let your face shine on us. Know that the Lord does wonders for his faithful one. The Lord will hear me when I call upon him. Tremble and sin not. Reflect upon your beds in silence. Response. Lord, let your face shine on us. O Lord, let the light of your countenance shine upon us. You put gladness into my heart more than when grain and wine abound. Response. Lord, let your face shine on us. Alleluia. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. Let your light shine before others, that they may see your good deeds and glorify your heavenly Father. Alleluia, Alleluia. My sisters and brothers, the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. <laughs> Reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to thee, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, You are the salt of the earth. But if salt loses its taste, with what can it be seasoned? It is no longer good for anything, but to be thrown out and trampled underfoot. You are the light of the world. A city set on a mountain cannot be hidden. Nor do they light a lamp and then put it under a bushel basket. It is set on a lampstand where it gives light to all in the house. Just so, your light must shine before others that they may see your good deeds and glorify your heavenly Father. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Amen. Jesus Christ. My dear friends, I will reflect with you today from, from the first reading. But coincidentally, today we also celebrate from, I would say, not so important, a saint, Saint Ephraim. He was um, a saint from the 4th century. Now, my, my reflection would have something to do with St. Ephraim. But as a people, we, we recoil from crisis. As human beings, we don't like crisis. We, we don't like problems. We don't like things that keep us uncomfortable. So we always would prefer and wish a life where we didn't have to face challenges or have to face things we were not prepared for. We get angry, we get upset, we blame. In some cases we fight, we become violent, we bring out the worst out of us under pressure. But, but that's not always how to handle it. And I believe there's a reason why God 
never allows us any victory without really battling, without really fighting. If you take your time and look into the course of history, we have never received or never made any strikes throughout human civilization <coughs> without having to really fight for it, without having to really earn it. Yeah, God gives us everything to fight for it. But, but we, we must do the fighting. We must do the struggle. We must do the striving. And so, if we see what God sees, and can perceive what the Almighty perceives. Every crisis, every challenge is an opportunity for growth and for progress and for development and for achievement. But until we are able to see what the Almighty sees and know what the Almighty knows, we are bound to shrink from our challenges and spend our entire time endure and suffering through our challenges without getting the benefits from it. You think about the fact that even our own civilization had to be won through struggle and a lot of pain. Just think about what the Lord went through. Think about what his mother went through to save us. It wasn't just free. So God gives us whatever it takes to win our fights and to win our battles. Today we hear how a woman who was facing the prospect for death, she believed, based on every assessment she had made, that this was going to be her last meal, together with her son, and said she was a widow. So based on every assessment, uh, whatever was in her bank, if she had any, any bank account, whatever was left at home, she knew this was her final meal. But God was going to try her. He sends Elijah. And you might want to find out, why would Elijah, who had so much power, to even decree that there would be no rain for all those years, why was he not able to also decree that he would have enough supplies of food and water and drink for as long as the famine lasted? No, no, God gave him power to decree this, just so that he would be part of the experience. That's why, whether you are the holiest man on earth or the most sinful person on earth, human experiences are part of the things we share together. God doesn't isolate the very righteous people to not go through all of that. He, gives, he allows us to go through all of that just so we are able to model for others what God can do if we open the channels to him. And Elijah was going to be the channel where this woman who very likely was she wasn't a Jew, don't forget, she wasn't a Jew, how she was going to gain faith in God through Elijah. She was going to see that there was some God out there who is able to do the impossible, a wonderful father, a great God. So Elijah appears while this woman is gathering wood for her final meal and says to her, please get me some water. She goes in to get water. And Elijah says, please, and a piece of bread. And she's very honest with Elijah. She says, as your God lives, because I'm sure she saw Elijah was dressed in a certain way, which made her know that, yeah, he must be a man of God. She says, as your God lives, whatever I have here can only be enough for me and my son. And after that, we'll be dead. Elijah says to her, this is what scripture says. As long as God lives, that jar of oil will not run out and your bushel of flour will not expire. She believed. I, I don't know what she saw in Elijah that made her believe. I'm sure if that was me, I would question, how do you know that? I will try to have Elijah make sense to me first. No, she did not. She believed. She went ahead and did what Elijah had asked. And scripture tells us that that jar of flour did not go empty and the jug of oil did not run dry as the Lord God had said through Elijah. That's how this woman was going to understand. In a moment of crisis, she was going to understand a new revelation. 
she was going to understand something new, something great and something powerful. She was going to grow in her own life. And I'm thinking about the double crisis that we have right now in our country. First, the crisis of this virus that has decimated our society, our economy, our lives, our way of living, everything. Now there's a chance that we might comport ourselves in ways where we're just complaining and blaming and never really getting to grow through this crisis. Just so that this crisis may come through and we suffer it and enjoy it and tolerate it but never really grow from it. So, so how can we see what the Almighty sees in this crisis and know what the Almighty knows in this crisis and so grow as a people or as, grow as persons through this crisis? That's not a question I can answer for anyone. That's a question that we must answer for each other. But secondly, there's another crisis, the racial tensions that are enveloping our country right now. Yes, yeah, there's a lot of destruction. There's a lot of routing. There will be a lot of this virus spreading around as a result. But there's a lot going on. This is another crisis that we have to face. And there's a chance we might go through this same crisis and never get the lessons and never grow as this widow did. It's all up to us. Our comportment in the face of this crisis will determine the level of growth or the lack thereof. But my hope is that we will understand that God never brings us through any challenge or any crisis or any difficulty, never allows anything our way unless it was meant to take us to some level, take us, make us grow in some way. My prayer is that as individuals and as a country, we would not allow this double crisis to go through us and have us go through them without getting the benefits of this. And, and so, St. Ephraim teaches us something very powerful. Ephraim was a 4th century Syrian pastor. Now, a deacon rather. Ephraim was good at using uh, pagan music. Pagan music, he would change everything and make pagan music and pagan rhythms to be used for Christian services. So in his hands, something that was meant for pagan worship and pagan enjoyment was transformed for the glory of God and for the good of God. Now I'm saying to you, in your hands, God could do great things. If like Ephraim, if like Elijah, we are willing to see what the Almighty sees and know what the Almighty knows. And that's why we need God's Holy Spirit. And so may His Spirit open the eyes of our hearts and the eyes of our minds that we may see what great calling this invitation has for all of us and how we can use the opportunity God has given to us and do great things for each other and for the world in which we live. As always, I'd like to end my, my reflections by reminding you that you are the delight of the Almighty God, that God loves you very much. Now let us pray. Our response is, Lord, hear our prayer. Gracious God, who rights all wrongs and delivers us from evil, we come before you in our prayer today. For the church universal, that it would listen to the prophets in its midst and proclaim your word, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those in authority, that they would listen to those in their care and make right decisions, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of God's people, that we may be open to the promptings of your spirit and use the challenges life affords us to grow and to know you better, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those prophets in our world whose warnings are frequently ignored, that they may be vindicated and their message followed, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who desperately need to see justice in their lives, especially prisoners, seniors, the unborn, and all those who suffer from racial injustices, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have asked our prayers, especially 
Michael and Indira Donegan. Pray also for specialist Erika Salapu and her family as they grieve at this time of great loss. Pray for all those who have birthdays and anniversaries today. Pray for those who are sick here at Walter Reed and around the world. Pray for doctors and nurses who care and provide. Pray for all those in need. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We now ask our Blessed Mother to intercede for us as we say the Hail Holy Queen, Mother of Mercy, our lives are sweetness and our hope. To you do we cry, for an instrument of thee. To you do we send up our sighs, mourning and weeping in this veil of tears. Turn then, most gracious advocate, eyes of mercy towards us. And after this our exile, show unto us the blessed fruit of our womb, Jesus. O Clemens, O loving, sweet Virgin Mary. Amen. Trusting in your almighty grace, we dedicate these prayers to your care, confident in your righteousness and truth. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Blessed are Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this bread to offer which earth has given and human hands have made, it will become our bread of life. Blessed be God of all creation. Blessed are Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruits of the vine, and work of human hands become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, my beloved sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours be acceptable to God, our mighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice in our hands and the praise and glory of his name for all good and for the good of all these children. Amen. Look kindly upon our service, O Lord, we pray that what we offer may be an acceptable oblation to you and lead us to grow in charity. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation. Always and everywhere to give you thanks. Father most holy, through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your work through whom you made all things, whom you sent as our Savior and Redeemer, incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin, fulfilling your will and gaining for you a holy people. He stretched out his hands as he endured his passion, so as to break the bonds of death and manifest the resurrection. So with all the angels and saints, we declare your glory as with one voice we are clean. Holy, 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 holy Lord, Lord, God of hosts, heaven, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, this gift, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dew fall, that they may become for us the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, the Lord Jesus took bread. Giving thanks, he broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. of me. With the first acclamation, let us proclaim the mystery of our faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and this chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have felt us worthy 
to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis of Pope and Timothy Blood Leo, our bishop, and all the clergy. Remember your servants whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that they who are, uni who are united with your Son in the death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. We remember all our deceased relatives and friends, those for whom we have been asked to pray and those who have died recently and also though all those who have died because of the virus. Welcome them, Lord, into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, our spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Let us rise and pray using the words the Lord left us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. To the King and the, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I leave you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord Jesus. Be with you always. And with your spirit. Dear friends, may we offer each other the sign of that peace. Lamb of God, you, you take, take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Look up, my sisters and brothers, and behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the suffering of the Lamb. God, I am, I am not worthy that he should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. At this moment, where we are unable to participate physically in the body and blood of Christ, we pray that the Lord, the pastor himself, may bring his body and his blood to you spiritually, that he may let you, through his spirit, receive the full benefits of this sacrament spiritually in your hearts, in your souls, and in your homes. Amen.
let us pray. May your healing work, O Lord, free us, we pray, from doing evil and lead us to what is right. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. 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 Prayer to St. Michael the Archangel. St. Michael the Archangel, Amen. defend Amen. us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and sinners of the devil. May God rebuke him, we pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits that prowl throughout the world, seeking the wings of souls. Amen. Before the final blessing, I'd like to take a moment to express my thanks to Father O'Grady and to Pedro and to all of you who have joined us from our hospital here and from around the world. We pray that God may help us, that God may open our eyes to see what great calling the opportunity is given us, has for us, and to benefit and use it. So always never forget, you remain the delight of God. The Lord be with you. With your spirit. Through the prayers of our blessed mother, may God bless and keep you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Dear friends, this Mass is ended. We go forth in peace to love and serve the Lord. And thanks be to God. We will sing a song to our Blessed Mother and ask her blessings. Let us sing Immaculate Mary. Immaculate Mary, thy praises we sing. Who reign now in splendor with Jesus our King. Ave, Ave, Ave Maria. Ave, Ave Maria. In heaven they blessed thy glory proclaim. On earth we thy children invoke your fame. Amen.